How's it going guys? It's Joe. Welcome to the channel. Today is another 3v3 GAC and we are currently in round 3 of week 1. So how's everyone feeling before we begin? I know I'm not a huge fan of 3v3, but I gotta say I am actually having fun. It's been quite stressful though, um, trying to find the right matchups and the right counters for all our opponents. So having a look at this gent, uh, 7.2 in terms of GP, pretty matched up in rank uh, 422,000 on the dot in terms of lifetime banners. Um, he's got two more rounds than me in terms of gear 13s, just got four more in that regard. I do um, have the edge in terms of the six dot mods and in terms of the plus 20s. So pretty formidable opponent here guys as um, just to recap my last opponent I did lose by one banner so I'm not in the finals however we're still gonna do our best we're gonna try and get the second place at least so having a look he does have a decent amount of holds and he did hit Kyber the last time at about rank 6000 he does have Jedi Master Luke as well. And having a look at the modding of his characters, they're pretty optimal. Um, pretty decent speed priority mods. In the bottom lines here, he's got Mon Mothma um, that we're going to go against as the first battle. Now, I wasn't going to muck around with this team, I did use gas. As I knew, uh, the gas leadership wouldn't allow for Mon Mothma to revive any of these characters. And this Troopio was exceptionally modded for um, speed and damage. So it was actually a pretty fast Troopio. And this Kara June is really highly relict as well. So as you can see, she's actually tanking a ton of damage from gas. Um, and despite having the armor shred, it took some time to take her down. Ultimately, 52 banners against that matchup. And he does have Rex here at the bottom as well. However, we're going to go for this Dooku squad. Now against Dooku, I do like to use Mandos um, every so often. And these um, Separatists actually... No, one Separatist with Night Sisters have the um, the option of reviving after we drop zombie however we're gonna try and get Django to take the last hit as then we won't be getting any revives from Talzin and now we've just got Dooku left out on the field although having a look we did lose a lot of our health and protection on Mando uh, it's quite unfortunate that uh, we're not going to be able to get that back. But decent 52 banner win. Next up, we're going to use this Kylo Ren, Watt and Sith Trooper against this Rex team. Now the idea here is Rex is going to get to his Rexalate pretty quickly. So really I want to pass the Bactoid Shield onto Kylo Ren Unmasked as the Rexalate doesn't really do much damage to him. So going to pass the Weapon Tech onto Sith Trooper and as you can see we've got a decently tanky Kylo and the counter attack from Sith Trooper or the assist actually procs the sacrifice on fives. But really I want to slow this down a bit as I want to get some of that protection back. Although it's quite troublesome trying to slow down this Red Trooper. As you can see he just continually assists in every single attack. And he drops the characters pretty quickly as well as he does so much damage. So uh, we've got a 52 banner average in the front walls there. In the back walls having having a look here we do have Jedi Master Luke on defense 
and he's got his GK led Jedi with Jedi Knight Anakin. So we're going to go straight for this team and we're going to use Kylo Ren, Han Solo and Wat Tam uh, not Wat Tambor but Thrawn. So the idea behind this is we, we want to try and slow down Wat Tambor from the get go. So we want to stun Wat Tambor although, um, and kill him off eventually. The problem here was that they went straight for Thrawn and Thrawn is in the yellow and now he's gone for that 80k damage from Jedi Master Luke. So really he was pretty useless in this battle. So we're going to use Siphon on Kylo. We still have uh, Ability Block, which isn't ideal. We've got Daze out on the field from Jedi Master Luke's Flux. And really at this point, we really just want to siphon as much stacks as we can by using the third ability. And eventually Kylo is going to get through Jedi Master Luke here, as long as he doesn't have the Bactoid shield. So this probably could have been two manned or soloed by Kylo. I guess we'll never know. We'll have to try that for the sake of science in the next one. Um, however, we did save Jedi Master Luke on offense, so we're going to utilize this against the second most menacing team, which is the Padme up here at the top. Now, he did place C3PO and Grandmaster Yoda here. As you can see, um, Jedi Master Luke's doing a ton of damage and just went through the protection up. So the idea behind this team is that I really didn't have much use for the two other Jedi, so decided to place them here. And we still have a full set of health and protection. So it's a good 54 banner win. And we're going to go against this Imperial Trooper team. We're going to two man it with Malak and Bastila Shan Fallen. So to begin with, uh, that stock is really fast at about 320 speed. And under that V's leadership uh, adds up to about 340. So he's taking a ton of turns. Luckily, we do have Malak on here and we're, we're just um, spreading the fear for every AOE that they place. So get rid of stock there. And the other great thing about having Bastila Shan here is that she constantly just regenerates health and protection. So apply fear yet again, We've got shock out on the field. Should be able to kill off Veers in this next attack. Pretty solid 55 banner win. And now we're gonna use our JKR team against this Finn up top. Now we're gonna mark resistance hero Finn as he really fuels this team. And without his speed and without him being able to utilize his abilities. Um, essentially makes this team quite useless. So now that he's gone, we're going to go for Poe. Now, quick backstory behind this GAC, guys. Um, funny thing was, I had a an extremely busy day at work on the day uh, of offense in this uh, particular round of GAC, and I, I actually rushed through this GAC without much contemplation and uh, much planning. So, really, uh, the problem was that uh, my opponent based on the GAC history likes to attack fairly late 
So what, what I had done was I had blitzed my placing my defense and unfortunately I didn't plan ahead as I do believe there were some squads here that I could have utilized on defense as I had too much on offense at this point. And that was a little bit problematic for me as uh, my opponent actually didn't place his Grievous team. Instead he did place a ton of his Night Sisters as you can see here. And usually I save my Night Sisters on offense for that particular reason. So I can use it against Grievous. However, as it looks like, he actually saved that for on offense just as I did. And I must say, it's pretty solid in 3v3 as you essentially can just regenerate protection with B1. So having a decently fast B1 allows you to um, get, regain your banners. Now in the back walls here, we do have this first order team. And I did save my Finn Resistance Hero Po on um, offense, whereas I typically would place them on defense, as they can catch you off guard with a decent amount of speed. As you can see, we quickly make good work of that Sith Trooper, and we're applying a ton of damage onto First Order Stormtrooper as well. Get through that taunt, use the assist there, we drop Sith Trooper, and this is where I actually realized that I had screwed up. As typically I would use JTR in this particular lineup, and although there was a Sith Trooper here, as long as you don't have any characters that immediately drop the other taunting tanks, then it shouldn't be a problem. However, now I, I had had a huge brain fart as I realized too late that I don't have healing immunity in any of these characters. Um, I do have um, buff immunity, however, that doesn't have much use. So really this became a frustrating timeout team. So I won't show you the entire footage and uh, make you guys all fall asleep. So we, we're going to speed this up in a bit. And as you can see, three seconds left, that was the timeout. And I believe at about uh, 20 seconds, 30 to 20 seconds left, I just placed it on auto. As Kylo just kept on regenerating. Pretty frustrating. However, it does happen. So we're going to clean up with this um, Nihilus and first order officer as we're gonna just keep passing turns on to Nihilus and try to get to Annihilate as soon as possible. So unfortunately we get a 33 banner win for that cleanup and we still have this droidica team here with a poggle lead. Now I did save CLS, 3PO and Chewbacca here. Although I don't have Han Solo, I do have a decently fast CLS. So I was able to take the first turn and I was just looking to get rid of droidica here.
And now we get rid of Pog Poggle as well. Now, unfortunately, Django still has the damage immunity. And it took away some of our protection on Chewy. For another 52 banner win. And lastly, we've got this GK team. And I did have Jedi Knight Luke. I'm going to use Heroes Arise onto Anakin there. We're going to dispel that taunt and place Master's Trading. 90k damage on Jedi Knight Anakin. And 100k damage on GK. So this guy's doing a lot of work. He's doing a ton of damage. And I have remodded him as of late as... I found that he does apply so much more damage with um, CDCC mods rather than offense. So this is a, a pretty straightforward team to utilize on offense and um, possibly also a really good team to use on defense. Now with the ship battles here, my opponent has placed Negotiator. So I did utilize my uh, Separatist team here with Grievous. And he actually placed his BLT, Rex and Anakin ship in the front lines. Now if you guys don't know, that's a pretty hectic team to be going against as Rex's turn meter gain and just the way this um, this particular lineup plays out is that it allows for the BLT bombers to come out really early on the, um, that GK leadership and that can be problematic if a lot of your ships are low by the time that actually happens so I really wanted to spread my buzz droids early on as you can see I've got two taunting tanks on the field and I did place uh, buzz droids out there and I was hoping at this point that spy would um, would t place ta um, taunt on Anakin which he actually did and as you can see the bombers came out really early and we lost a lot of our health and protection on our characters here and I did actually add Rex as a reinforcement as I knew I could get a little bit of my protection back. Although at this point I just wanted to win. And I did get 56 banners which is pretty bad in terms of um, fleet efficiency. However I still find doing negotiator mirror matchups against that particular defense quite um, iffy and 50-50 in terms of the turn order and RNG really. Now against this Radus, I knew that Houndstooth would be quite problematic. However, if I'm able to get rid of these resistance ships early on, I should still have a decent advantage. We get Undying Loyalty out there. Still got a taunt on Hound's Tooth. So we bring out Plo Koon, increase everyone's turn meter, use our AoE. We're gonna um, cleanse off all those debuffs on Plo Koon. Now that um, multi assist from the the negotiator actually did the trick on that hound's tooth and we're finally able to get rid of the last ship for 65 banners so pretty happy with that last ship result at the very least and just to show you my defense here guys i do like to set rex echo and arc trooper right here in the front got mon mothma and padme up top we got darth revan boba um, Newt Gunray and Asajj Ventress So a good mixture of different characters and I did set Ray in the back 
Ray, Veda, um, Geos, and Imperial Troopers. As typically in the last couple of GAs, oh, last couple of rounds, I didn't actually place any of my Galactic Legends. So it's really good to mix it up. And in fleets, I did have Thrawn and Akbar. Now here's a, another funny story, right, guys? Um, my opponent actually attacked not long after I had finished my attacks. So he might be one of those guys that just likes to wait and see what score the, their opponent gets and therefore they're able to find how many banners they actually require in order to win. Um, so this guy was pretty efficient. I've got to say he did one shot all my characters. Now unfortunately as he placed his negotiator on defense I think this is where he fell into that trap of utilizing the malevolence against Akbar and then using his own Akbar against my Thrawn. Now I did have Hound's Tooth in that mix, but my theory is that my Empire Bomber did a ton of um, did a ton of work against his Akbar fleet, and unfortunately cost him that match. Now the funny thing was that at this point I had accepted defeat. I slept on it, woke up the next day to find that I had won by ten banners. So I hope you guys like the content today. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.